In this video, we're gonna be looking at the most popular sorting algorithms and compare their performance based on different input sizes. We're first gonna look at the theoreticals and see which ones perform the fastest, but what I really wanna do is to actually implement these in code and time them based on different input sizes and see which one is really fastest. Before we jump into it, I want to explain what this video is not. This video is not an explanation of how these algorithms work. There are already a ton of resources on that. Also, we're gonna be going over the time complexity of these algorithms in big O notation. So if you don't know, if you don't know big O notation, that part might be a little confusing, but I think other than that, you should be okay. And then after we do all the comparisons, I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on which algorithm you guys should be using. So stick around for that. So here we have a chart of the sorting algorithms I mentioned and their respective time complexities from uh, worst case scenario, average case, and best case scenario. And what I really wanna focus on is this average case. So we see that for bubble sort, insertion sort, and selection sort, the average case is gonna be n squared. And for quick sort and merge sort, the average is gonna be n log of n. So quick sort and merge sort, uh, these are considered the quote unquote fast sorting algorithms. And then these top three up here are considered the slow algorithms. And, and we're not gonna worry about heap sort for this video. And a couple interesting things here to mention are that we see that for bubble sort and insertion sort, the best case scenario is actually big O of n, whereas the best case scenario for the, you know, the quick algorithms are gonna be n log of n. So say your input list is already sorted. Well, the way that these two first algorithms work is that um, basically they only have to go through the list one time in order to realize that it's already sorted. The other interesting thing is for the worst case scenario for quick sort, it's actually gonna be big O of N squared. So based on the order of the items in the list given to the quick sort, or if you, if you know how quick sort works, depending on how the pivots are selected, you could actually get a runtime of N squared. And one other thing to mention here is that for the average case, it's actually impossible for a sorting algorithm to get faster than n log n. There's an entire proof dedicated to that, which I used to know very well, but the main takeaway is that it's impossible for a list that's unsorted to get sorted and faster than n log n. All right, so here's the game plan. I implemented each one of these sorting algorithms and put it in their own class. And by implemented, I mean, I just copied it from Geeks for Geeks. So how the code is gonna work is, here we create an array. Initially, we're gonna use a small array of size 10. We loop through that array, and for each element, we just pick a random number that's either from zero to the size of the array. That way it'll be a, a pretty random array. Um, we might have duplicates in it, but that's totally fine. And then down here, we have a variable called start time, which we just set it to whatever the time is of the system using nanoseconds. Then we call the sort method, we let that run, then we create another variable called end time and capture the system time at that time. This gives us a pretty, not an exact, but a pretty good estimate of how long the algorithm took. And then finally, what I do is I just print out the difference. So end time minus start time. So I'm gonna run each one of these five sorting algorithms. We're gonna use an input size of 10, a thousand, a hundred thousand, and a million. And I'm gonna run each one a few times. I'm gonna take the average of it. We're gonna put it in a chart and then we're gonna do some analysis. One eternity later. All right, so I went ahead and ran everything and I made a little chart here. So on the left side, we have every single sorting algorithm and then each column is gonna be the number of elements that I ran it against. So if we look at something with a small list, like 10 elements, we actually see that the, the quote unquote slow algorithms we're actually faster than merge sort and quick sort. And this is due to the fact that these are actually really simple algorithms. They're usually just double for loops, whereas merge sort and quick sort, uh, there's just a little bit more going on there. I know quick sort uses a little bit of recursion. Merge sort has uh, more operations here. So that additional overhead for merge sort and quick sort takes longer than those actual extra comparisons that we're doing for these other three algorithms. But once we get to a thousand elements, this is where we really see the performance hits of using the slow algorithms. We see that bubble sort is the slowest. And by the way, these are all in nanoseconds. So bubble sort is the slowest one here, followed by selection sort and insertion sort. And then we see a dip here with these other two algos. And it really just gets amplified more once we get to 100,000 elements. We see bubble sort here. This took about 13 seconds. Selection sort took three seconds. Insertion sort took about three quarters of a second. And then merge sort and quick sort took just a fraction of a second. And then finally for a million elements, these three didn't even finish. I had them running for a while, but since these algorithms grow exponentially, 
going from 100,000 to a million. Um, I mean, I don't even know how long it would have taken for these. And then we see a merge sort and quick sort still ran pretty quickly. The interesting thing here is the quick sort actually performed a lot better than merge sort, despite them having the same time complexity. And that's just due to the nature of how the algorithm works. So as we can see from these results, unless you're using a very small data set, like 10 elements or less, merge sort and quick sort are gonna be the way to go. Now, how do you decide which one to use? A lot of it is, is based on preference, but one thing to note is that quicksort is an unstable sorting method, whereas merge sort is a stable sorting method. Now, what's the difference between the two? Basically, an unstable sorting method means that if you have two elements that are the same before the list is sorted, once they're sorted, they're not necessarily going to stay in that same order. And for things like primitive types, like strings and integers, it doesn't really matter because say you have a five and another five, like it doesn't really matter what order they're in because they're exactly the same. But say you're dealing with something like objects that could have different properties, uh, you might want to keep the integrity of the initial order of the list. And that's something that merge sort does do. So when you're coding, what do you want to use? Well, most languages will have a built-in sorting method. And that's the one that you generally want to use. So in Java, this would be arrays.sort. And this is because this code has been written by a team of professionals. It's been thoroughly tested. It's been thoroughly used. It's been optimized. So, so you're going to want to go with whatever your language's built-in sorting algorithm is. And the cool thing here is I'm using IntelliJ. And what you can do is you can actually right-click and go to the implementation of the JDK. So if we go here, we see that the sorting method, so there, I put a couple in here, right? So we have arrays.sort for an array of integers, and then we have arrays.sort for an array of objects. So for the integer, if we right click, if we go to the implementation, we see here that it's using what's called a dual pivot quick sort. So a dual pivot quick sort is really just a flavor of quick sort that's been optimized to run faster. And if we go back here, if you go to the sorting method of the objects, we see that down here, it's using what's called a comparable Tim sort. And that's just another flavor of this other algorithm called Tim sort, which is a stable sorting algorithm. So with the objects, it's using a stable sorting algorithm. With the integers, it's using an unstable one in that dual pivot quick sort. All right, so there you have it. Those are comparisons of the five most popular sorting algorithms. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of the video. If you did, make sure you guys hit the like button. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to join the Keep On Coding Discord server where you can talk to and connect with other developers. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and keep on coding.